wake up, no sunlight, so cold, sleep is nice, so tired, my eyes fight, they just want to close back up tight. Oh my hand, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have, God, to just have conversation, God, to exchange ideas, to exchange experiences. And God, we just pray and believe that ultimately that you would get all of the glory, God, that, that your divine wisdom would be shared, God, that people would share this. Uh, with their friends, God, that, that your Holy Spirit would be felt through it. God, we lean upon your word. God, we just seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And we believe that all these things will be added unto us. God, we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that our suffering is going to produce endurance. God, that through our endurance, it will produce character. And that character will give hope to other men and women that listen to this podcast. God, so we just thank you for Andy. God, we thank you for yes. the mantle of leadership and influence that you've placed upon his life. God, we thank you for the gift of communication that you've given him. But God, we we thank you for the generosity of his heart, God. We thank you that at a young age, God, you touched his heart with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. God, that you've anointed him to move mountains with faith. So, God, we just pray that you would go before us in this friendship that's being created in this podcast, this, this being assembled. God, that you would bless the sound crew, that you would bless the editors, God, that they would feel the presence of God as they're assembling these things that go out onto YouTube and onto Instagram. That, God, that, God, that your favor would go with these messages. And God, ultimately, that you would get the glory. We thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Damn. Welcome to the 1% Podcast. <laughs> Guys, listen, so we're going to go ahead and kick this off. We already did. Um, here today with Steve Weatherford. Real quick, Steve, somebody doesn't know who you are, right? How do they go? How can they find you on Instagram real quick? Because people are going to be like, uh, at, yeah. I've seen you, but how do I? I want to know exactly who he is yeah well i'm excited to be on here uh if you guys want to send me any dms i would say the platform i'm most active on would be instagram at weatherford the number five um and i'm in the dm so after this podcast man if you guys have any questions dude, they're gonna blow you up dude yeah. it's gonna be no, insane. i look forward to it yeah and by I'm the way like you i love relationships yeah yeah man. and dude listen guys i want to tell you something real quick number one very athletic great family loves god He's been through some grind. He was just telling me a story. We just got together, and I was like, dude, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, tell that, tell, tell that to them because I'm a storyteller, and I like to yeah. be told stories, right? Yeah. Like, you know, in the Bible, they tell a lot of stories, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, he didn't always just tell you, like, yeah. what you should learn. He would tell you a story, and then parables. you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, I get that now. Um, really quick, how old are you? I'm 41 years old. You're 41 years old. He's jacked. He's in great <laughs> shape. Um, you know, you're always uh, motivating, inspiring. You're living the standard yourself. I watch mm. you all the time working mm. out. I see you with young men. I see you with older people. I see you on stages speaking. Um, but really what I see you doing is just sharing Jesus with everybody. Mm. But mm. also, you're not you're not civilized. You're not this normal cookie cutter I like that you're not civilized. preacher right you're right he's not civilized right he hasn't conformed <laughs> yeah. to and I'm not going to say church okay because yeah. it's 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 your your ministry is yeah. your you right yeah. and I've always been a wildcat I've always brought what I believe my craziest if, I, if you crack me open I'm crazy mm -hmm. if I crack you open you're crazy mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that don't reach a lot of people because they're not crazy inside mm -hmm. and only the crazy people can get the message to someone else because they're just relentless and they're like dude I got to get it through to this person and that they need to change, they need to wake up, or else you're going to end up being like everybody else. So you've stayed crazy. You haven't got tamed. Mm. Um, obviously, um, everybody loves you, no matter what age they are. Everybody on my team, I told a couple of them, I said, guys, Steve's coming down. They're like, oh, dude, I watch him all the time. He's all jacked up. He works out. You know, and, and what I really love is that your whole message, your motivational message, your inspiration, the way you teach, still all wraps back to Jesus. And I mm. think that my foundation in life yeah, I've always said it's physical, mental, business, but it's truly spiritual, physical, then mental, then business. If I'm mm. spiritually right with God, he's a big God. He wants me to have a big life. Um, he's, he's a big God. He can slay all my enemies. Mm. So, like, I need to understand, like, everything that's going to happen is going to come because of him. So then there's God and there's physical. I got to be physically fit, dude. I'm going to tell you. At the end of the day, I know there's a lot of people that don't really understand when I talk working out and all that, but dude, the physical part of that allows me to have a good, healthy relationship with me. Mm -hmm. I have to like me if I'm going to like anyone else. I can't expect for someone else um, to have what I don't have. And if I want them to have love, I got to really love me. If I want to give somebody something, I got to have that myself. So I find this identity in me, right, in God, and then also in spending time with myself in the gym. Mm. I have a good relationship with pain. I know you do too. Mm. It makes me learn me better and self mastery mm. is, is important. I find that in the gym and then mental, like, dude, you got to have a mental, mentally strong mindset. Right. And a lot of people, the reason why they're breaking and we're in a society right now, mm. that's weak, you know what I mean? 
I really think if people were more physically strong, they would be more mentally strong. I know they would be. People wouldn't be depressed. They wouldn't be suicidal. How many times have you walked out of the gym and be like, God, I hate me. You love you, dude. Mm -hmm. You might not like it when you walk in. You may be aggravated. You ought to wake up early. But halfway through the workout or when you're walking out, you're like, dude, I'm on fire, dude. Mm -hmm. Your brain's, you're in a great mood. You're ready to take over the world. And then business. Whatever you do for a living, I don't care what it is. Doesn't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in a great mood, man. You're going to freaking slay it. You're going to kill it. You're going to be a top 1%. And your results are going to go through the roof. So right. that's my foundation. But you always bring everything back to God. And I think mm -hmm. that one of my problems is I forget sometimes to remind people that he's the foundation. Mm -hmm. And what I like about you, mm -hmm. you just do such a good job of just like making sure you bring that back in. So that's something that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just want to say thank you. We love you. And dude. Um, I would say let it rip, man, but yeah. don't forget to tell that story real quick what you're yeah. talking about because a lot of our people, we got a lot of people that make a lot of money, they kick butt, they're the best at what they do, but then we got a lot of people coming up. Hey guys, I would love to personally invite you to come train out with me. I'm gonna be coached by my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. All you have to do is have trained with me at least on a training course before. So if you're watching this, if you've purchased one of my training courses before, you qualify for this. By the way, it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It's absolutely free. So what does that mean? That means if you're watching this and you've trained with me, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I want you to come train with me. I want you to come out to Scottsdale, Arizona. You're going to train with me while I get coached from my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi. It's going to be three days straight. This room is going to be filled with about 500 people that are raging fans of what the LA group stands for, is the core values, the standards, and winning and kicking ass. And if that's you, you're going to be with these like-minded people and you're going to be with me while I coach. I love you guys. It's something that I've never done before, but it's a private invite for those who have trained with me. So if you want to come to this, just text the number 918-210-02. Two five four. Write it down. It's very simple. 918 210 0254. Shoot me a text. Say, hey, Andy, my name's John Watson. I did buy your training course, you know, a year ago. I would love to come train with you on these three days with you and your company while you're getting coached. I'd love to spend that time with you. If that's you, boom, we'll send you over an invitation. It's limited seating, only 450 to 500 people, and then we're cutting it off. Let's get back to the video. Okay, a lot of people getting rejected, a lot of people that are broken. I mean, dude, 95% of the world, is, which is the masses, isn't where they want to be. You know what I mean? And I think they get labeled, and I think things happen, and I think they stop trying and giving their best. Mm. And when you were telling me that story a minute ago, dude, I was like, dude, listen, that's a time right there that that could have been the fate. You go left and mm. quit, or you went the fate and go right, and you're like, dude, you know what? Yeah. All right, all right, this is my time. And you put a chip on your shoulder, and you went mm. psycho, right? And then. Yeah. You went to another, and obviously you still carry it today. So, mm. anyways, let it rip, man. Yeah. Whatever's on your heart. <clears throat> well, bring first, it out. Th thanks for having me. Um, and what Andy's talking about is, I first got up into your HQ, and Andy was in some meetings, so I had an opportunity to talk to several of the members and the sales staff, and just asking them, you know, different things that they loved about the culture or how this place has stretched their vision or changed their habits and their mindset. And um, one guy in particular, I was like, man, it almost seems like Andy's like a father figure to you. He's like, oh man, yeah, definitely. And so one of the things that I've noticed that Andy helps a lot of these young men up here do is to change their perspective on how they view themselves, mm -hmm. essentially to help them change their own identity. So the story that I was sharing with Andy was a story from when I played for, for a coach named Rex Ryan. Uh, the first year I played for the Jets was the first year he was there. But previous to me playing for Rex Ryan, uh, I started my NFL career with two and a half seasons with the Saints. And then most professional athletes have probably never been cut before as an athlete, right? And so during the middle of my third season, I got cut. Mm. And I had never tasted rejection. I'd never tasted what, the blade. What did that feel like before you finished? Like, what did that feel like? Like swallowing a bowling ball. Because here's the deal, Andy. Like, much like a lot of the people that are listening to this, there's probably something about them that they're, like, natural to. Like, for you, speaking in sales. Like, it's something that you've worked hard in mastery, but it's something that came natural to you. And like, wow, I'm going to lean into this. And that, at some seasons of your life, probably was your identity. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it gets stripped from you or mm -hmm. you're told by an authority, you're not good enough. 
it could really wreck you. And so this is the first time for me that my identity had been shaken. And, and I remember I went from that team and immediately claimed by the Kansas City Chiefs, and I played there for two games until their punter was healthy, and then I got cut again. And then I went to the Jacksonville Jaguars because their punter was hurt and played the remaining seven games. And then when it came to final cuts the next season, the Jags cut me. So within 12 months, I had tasted the blade of rejection three different times. And I'm thinking in my mind, Andy, much like a lot of people that could be listening or watching this right now is like, man, I've been like fired, man, I've been divorced, man, I've been bankrupt, man, I've been obese. Like nobody's going to want me anymore. Mm. And, and I remember my agent calling me and saying, Hey, I just got off the phone with Rex Ryan, New York jets. They want you to be their starting punter week one. This is like, let's go fresh start. So I remember flying into Florham Park, New Jersey, getting into the New York Jets locker room and walking in and seeing another punter in there. I quickly call my agent. I'm like, dude, there's another guy in here. He's like, yeah, they just updated me. Um, they're not signing you. They're having a tryout with you and this other guy. So I go into this workout. I pistol whip this guy. I just crush him. And I get done. I'm taking my cleats off. And Rex Ryan walks up to me. And he said, hey, I just want you to know that even before this workout, you were my guy. And I was like, I looked at Rex and I was like, well, what do you mean? Because in my mind, I'm thinking like, I've been cut all these times. Like they're probably thinking I'm in a slump or I'm a head case or something's wrong with me because I've been rejected by three other teams. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, I want a guy like you. I want a guy who's tasted the blade. I want a guy who's been in the darkness because when we go to the Super Bowl, he said, you're going to know the worst thing that can happen. You've already experienced it. Mm -hmm. So he saw value in the wounds or the scars that I had that were on my resume. And so I say those things, and Andy, I, I feel like wants me to share that because there's so many people that listen to this podcast that let their resume or what the scoreboard says disqualify them from certain relationships, disqualify them from certain lifestyles, disqualify them from a certain um, income level, and and that was a time that was a to me i call that a defining moment because mm -hmm. that was a defining moment when somebody of authority helped me to see myself with a different perspective and so now my scars weren't a bad thing that i need to hide actually my scars get, will give permission to people who have wounds it will give them permission to heal so i say those things to say i believe that people that are listening to this right now have things, they have shame, they have guilt, they have addictions, they have generational curses, they have self-limiting beliefs and cycles that they want to get out of so bad, but because they see their identity at, as a certain thing, they don't see themselves as worthy, right? Because of their disqualifications. And there's a Bible verse that Andy, it like really speaks to me, and I'm just believing that God's word is going to speak to people right now. And it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and I was a guy who in my life had, had experienced disappointment just like everybody else. And I believe that everybody listening to this forms their own opinion of their identity based upon limited knowledge and limited experience, right? Because you only have limited knowledge because you only know what you know. And you only had limited experiences because you only have experienced what you have experienced. Mm -hmm. And based upon that, Andy, you've decided that I'm a winner. Based upon that, you've decided that some of the things from my past actually were set up to build me to be stronger. Whereas some people can look at their past and say, based upon these things, I'm a loser. And I believe that somebody interrupted your life. And I don't know who it was, Andy, but somebody interrupted how you think mm -hmm. and they allowed you to see yourself differently. And what you did was you agreed with them. Dude, that's crazy. We could end right there and we could all just have yeah, great lives yeah, until very, we die. Yeah, very powerful, right? Hold on, I got two questions. By the way, that was crazy. That was amazing. So if you're watching this, comment below. Let him know what you think. That was badass. Um, I want to ask some. Was that Philippians 4.13? No, Philippians 4.13 is you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. What oh, yeah. I shared with you, um, Pierce, refresh my memory. Romans 12, two, do not conform to yeah, Romans, oh, Romans, Romans 8.28 is, and we know that in all things God works together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's right. Good. I love that. Just in case somebody want to look that up, yeah. the transforming yeah. of the mind. Romans 
do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Dude, I just told him before we started this podcast. Well, maybe when it started, I said, I love that you haven't conformed. And then you said that, do not conform it's to the like patterns a, of this world. It's an anchor verse in my life because when you say that, like, yeah, patterns when you say and you're uncivilized to me, yeah. John the Baptist was uncivilized, yeah. man. And that was yeah. Jesus' homie. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want to be uncivilized. I want to be unpolished. I want to be, I want to be unchurched. Yeah. Right. Because I'm, I'm like you. I'm just different. You're of the right? spirit. You're, you're, you're I, the, the I want to meet people you. who have never encountered God. I want to meet people who have church hurt. I want to meet people who grew up in religion mm -hmm. and who have never experienced God like because I grew up that way. Andy, I grew up in a very stiff church. I grew up where you stand up, you sit down. If you talk, you got smacked in the back of the head. I grew up in a Sunday school and I loved, I loved my Sunday school teacher, but nearly almost every Sunday, I had to be removed from class because I just disrupted everything, right? I was labeled as a young boy as attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Something's wrong with him. So I go to, I have two brothers, I have a sister, right? Oh, I definitely don't fit in like them. Well, I go to Sunday school. Well, I definitely not like them. Well, then I go to kindergarten. I'm thinking, Andy, okay, I go to kindergarten. There's 27 people. Out of these 26 other people, there's got to be at least one other weirdo, renegade, misfit, runaway like me. Right? Yeah. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. Two one zero zero two five four. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. I look around. I get sent to the principal's office the first five days in a row, and it was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Andy, where they could spank you without calling your parents. Yeah. So you know what I associated my hyperactivity with? Yeah. Pain. Bad. I mean, when my friends go out to play, I got to stand on the wall because I got in trouble. And so I just associated my identity is like, you're smiling at me, like, and I'm smiling back, Dude, right? Cause back you're sitting and you're looking at somebody, I'm six foot three, I'm 245 pounds of Jesus loving machine. Why? Because I've, ta I've tasted darkness. I hated myself at five years old. So I can laugh now cause I'm walking in full freedom, but there's people that are listening to this yeah, right now, Andy, that. That, are, that are connecting with, man, I like my earliest memories of myself is not fitting in too. Like, yeah. and I needed somebody to help to shift my identity of that. Yeah, I got held back in kindergarten. Yeah. I, I literally, right. everything you just said, the same thing happened No, I to think me. like you and I, I coming followed, together. Dude, I followed no instructions. Mm -hmm. I literally couldn't learn in a classroom. Like, I was all over the place. I was a little bit slow to learn, but once I figured it out, I became dangerous, but nobody wanted to spend yeah. a little bit of extra time with me. Mm -hmm. So they just, it was just like, dude, I just was like, dude, I just rebelled. You right. know what I'm saying? Against everything. And like, I didn't want to rebel. I just wanted to fit in. But since I didn't fit in, and I'm going to tell you this, everybody watching this should read a book called Lynchpin. Mm. You should read it too if you haven't read it. Mm, I haven't. And it talks about like, dude, there's like, there's like people used to work in the old days in the factories, right? And then like almost now, like people work for companies, right? And then there's the owners that have the employees. There's, there's two types of people. Mm. Either you own the company and people work for you or you're an employee and you work for the company. And they said there were two types of people. But there's really a third type. And, and the rules have changed in this world, and you need to learn that the rules have changed. Mm. And so I, me and you have understood the rules. Yeah. You can't follow instructions, okay? Don't shut your mouth and fall in line. Mm. You need to stand out, okay? You need to be different. You need to make connections that other people can't. Mm. Dude, you need to realize it's not about getting a different job. It's about doing your job you already have now differently. Mm. It's about being a freaking linchpin. Mm. It's about being different, dude. This world right now is so thirsty. For something freaking different, mm. that's the reason why you're blowing up all this shit you went through when you were young. Everything is getting you ready for what's what's happening now. Mm. And dude, I'm telling you, had all that not happened, you wouldn't be able to play what you're going to play now. Mm -hmm. So this is our time, man. So I tell anybody that's lost, and a lot of people that are lost, they've been labeled their whole life. Mm. And it's like, dude, this is your time, man. You need to right. wake up. You need to develop, right? Study. Um, out, out study everybody. I, I'm pretty sure that every day you probably lean into some kind of reading, you lead into some kind of mentorship, you lead mm -hmm. into some kind of leadership, right? Mm -hmm. um, every day to self-develop and get better. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you dangerous. And I'll bet when you were younger, you probably didn't like to learn, but I'm willing to bet now you love freaking learning, don't mm -hmm. you? You love learning? I love, well, I mean, here's the deal. I know that one day my life is no longer 
cannot be successful. I've done that on like multiple different levels by the world standards, and I was I was so empty with all of it. Mm. Um, so you asked me, do I love learning? Yes, I love learning, not just for the sake of lo loving learning. My ultimate goal and the vision for my life, Andy, is one day my body's going to expire, and I'm going to go up to a heavenly place and because I've repented of my sins and I've re received Jesus as my Lord and my Savior this angel is going to open up the this book called the the Lamb's Book of Life mm -hmm. and my name is going to be written in Jesus's blood I know that's already done mm -hmm. right the thing that I'm most focused on and a, a lot of people that claim the name of Christ don't focus on this they, they focus on like punching their ticket to heaven because like Jesus's blood is so perfect, you ta can't take it back. And it's like such a fact. And so most of us like punch that ticket and then we go get what we can get. But we don't think about the next meeting that happens and the next meeting happens in the throne room. And we sit on this seat called the Bema seat. And our creator stands before us on his throne in his awesome power. And he opens up the book of works. And the book of works is, is the visual I give myself every day. Because God is going to give each and every one of us time, talents, and treasures. Mm. And I know he's loaded you up. I know he's loaded me up. So for 30, I'm 41. For 36 years, Andy, I built my own world. I punched my ticket at 11. I received Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. But I didn't know what it was like for him to be my Lord, for him to rule my life. And it took until I had a radical encounter with God at 36 years old in the desert when I felt the power of God. Not like the knowledge of God, not the wisdom of God, not the love of God, the power, the presence, the peace, the joy of God. I felt it in a moment. And after I felt that, the questions of, is God real? Andy, Andy God was so real. Is God good? God is so God. I never felt joy or peace like this. And I knew that God operated outside of time. And so after that moment, I realized the reason I was so empty, hopeless, depressed was because I was using my gifts that God gave me to build my own kingdom. And so when God, when we stand before God, God opens up this book of works. He's going to say, Steve, I gave you this much time. Steve, I gave you these many talents and I gave you this many treasures. What did you do with it? Mm -hmm. And up into 36, Andy, I could only say, I built my own world. Yeah, I was twice named the NFL's fittest man. I was a Super Bowl champion. I was a multimillionaire. I was married. I had multiple kids. On paper, my life is perfect. Why am I depressed? Why do I have anxiety? Why do I have like suicidal ideations? Because my perspective, Andy, of myself was broken. I received Jesus when I was 11 years old at a, at a power team concert where guys were like breaking bricks in Jesus' name. I'm like, wait, a, a Christian could look like that? So I shot my hand up, right? And then six months after that, I had a, a male teacher that sexually abused me. And so all those assurances that I had that I belonged to God, even though I'm different, like you said, be different. Well, here's the deal. I want everybody to hear me when I say this. Being different isn't let me think about what's different and let me be that. No, no, no. What Andy is, is saying, and I'm going to agree with this, is being different is being exactly how God designed you to be. Mm -hmm. But at a young age, mm -hmm. because life conforms us, we begin to hate ourselves, mm. right? Because we're different. Because the world wants us to conform. The enemy wants us to take the unique things about us, our gifts, mm -hmm. and to dim them down, right? Yeah. And if we don't dim them down, if you like put them on fire, the way that, you, that, that, that you've put yours on fire and I've put mine on fire, then the enemy wants you to say, these gifts belong to you. Build your own world, bro. And then the enemy throws all these distractions and all these opportunities mm. because they're like, your life's about you, dude. You're so great. Go to Vegas. Go to M Mumbai. Speak in all these places. Don't worry about your six kids, dude. Like, don't worry about your marriage. Like, it's good. This is once in a lifetime, mm. Steve. Do it. Do it. Oh, you're getting too exhausted and you can't keep up? Steve, get, get some Adderall. You have ADHD. It's like, it's legal, right? Oh, you can't go to sleep because you're taking too many Adderall? Smoke some weed, Steve. Like, you can come down from it, right? Oh, you're sad because you miss your family because you feel like totally out of order. Uh, eat up these Percocets. Like, it's okay. You have back injuries. You can do that, right? So I was carrying around all of this baggage and all the shame and this guilt of all the, all the mistakes that I've made. So when I started this podcast kind of talking about being ashamed of some of the things from your past, like, I don't say that 
Because, like, the only thing that I have to be ashamed about, guys, when I say this, isn't that I got cut three times. Like, I got exposed to porn when I was 12 years old after a, ma a man molested me. And for the rest of the next 24 years, I wasn't real sure if I was gay or not. Right? Because I didn't have intimacy with my dad. My dad was always there, Andy. But my dad was like Clint Eastwood. Right? He was always there. But he didn't sit me on his lap and touch my back and tell me I'm a good boy and he's proud of me. He said... This is what it's expected of you as a man. We go to church. We don't cuss. We don't drink. We don't do these things. And if you broke the rules, my dad would punish you, right? And he was very fair. did not beat us. But, like, I learned from my early age consequences. Mm -hmm. If you do this and it's wrong, you're going to get punished this way. And so I believe a lot of people that are listening to this, we first form our opinion of God based upon our earthly natural father. Right. I had a very consequential father that was always there. So I never doubted whether God was there. But I knew that if I made a mistake, he was going to punish me. Mm -hmm. And as a lot of people listen to this, Andy, maybe they have an opinion of God. Because maybe their father passed when he was younger or he left. Maybe they have opinion that, that God's not there and they're insignificant and they feel rejected and they feel re abandoned. Mm -hmm. And so. It's very unique to the person, but it's all formed on the father that we had. And here's the deal. Could give you and I, like, you're sitting here thinking about your sons, right? As, as I'm saying this, much mm -hmm. like everybody else is. Like, man, like, am I showing up in a way that's, like, giving my son a complex? And he's sorry to bust your bubble. Sorry to bust mine. Yes. All of our sons need some type of therapy later. Your assignment is not to be the perfect father. Your assignment, Andy, and my assignment, everybody's assignment, that's a father. If you got peaches between your legs and you have the ability to multiply and you have multiplied, your assignment is not to be the perfect leader to your son. Your assignment is to lead him to the perfect leader by exampling it to him. So if you want your sons and your daughters to think God is unconditional, you better be unconditional with your kids. You better learn to show them grace. But sometimes it's hard for you and I to show grace because it's never been shown to us by our fathers. So as I was talking to Jacob Hagerman, the freaking chain breaker, mm -hmm. right? You allowed him to see himself as you, you operating as a father figure, allowed him to see himself differently. And with an identity perspective shift, you begin to see yourself not as broken, but as battle tested and worthy. Mm. And, and for me, it required, it required me feeling the power of God the presence of God, because I already had the knowledge of God, but I felt so disqualified. I felt so dirty. And, and I made up in my mind, even all of these people that love me, that are cheering for me at the Super Bowl or after the Super Bowl, because I set a Super Bowl record in the biggest game of all time, right, against Tom Brady. I broke a, had an NFL record for most punts inside the 10-yard line. Like, I balled out, Andy. And I remember that night was the most depressing night and also the most exciting night of my life because I did something I never thought that I could do. I knew that it was gonna to lead to a multi-year, multi-million dollar deal. I knew that my life changed. Like for the rest of my life, when people announced me from stage, I got a new last name. I'm forever now Steve Weatherford Super Bowl champion, not former Super Bowl champion. I got the, I got the ring in my fanny pack, playboy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna share it with you right now, yeah. right? This is the spoils of it, right? And I share this with you because even with this, that signifies a world champion. Nobody can ever take it away from me. Got my name tattooed on the side of it. That's that so cool. night that that happened, happened, put it on your finger, be a champion for an hour. Like champion, you know, man. <laughs> so big, bro. Is the night that that happened. I remember getting back to my hotel room after all. We had Kenny Chesney playing this private show just for our team and our family. I get back to my hotel room, 2 o'clock in the morning. Super Bowl champion. About to be multi-multi-millionaire. And I remember walking into my room, and it was the first time, Andy, that I had an opportunity to just be, be alone. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking a deep breath and feeling like, I don't feel any different. And because I didn't feel any different, and I realized the price that I paid, this wave of depression came over me because I felt like something was going to change or shift inside of me. And I realized in that moment, Andy, that was my seventh year in the league, I realized that the days in the NFL were numbered only by the amount of dollars that I could save because I knew that the NFL didn't have what was going to fix this hole inside of me. Mm -hmm. So I retired three years later. I went out to San Diego, and my marriage is in shambles. I'm addicted to 
Percocets, Adderall, smoking weed, just in like some type of combination to get the workload done, right? Just, I was a chemist with my depression and anxiety. That's the best way that I can put it. And I got invited to this church. And when I walked into this church, I, wa- I showed in, I walked in five minutes late because mm-hmm. I had just retired and I, and I was like hosting TV shows in New York. I didn't want people to, you know, there's cheerful people at church. Hey, how are you? Oh, God bless you. I, I don't want any of that noise, man. I'm freaking depressed. My marriage is falling apart, but on Instagram, everything looks great. So I show up five minutes late, and I find the darkest corner that I can find, Andy. And I walk in, and I like was like struck by energy that I had never felt in a church. And I look around. These people got their hands raised up. And like some of these people are crying. And they are not worried about what people to the right and to the left are thinking about them at all. They are just like crying out to God. And I had never seen anything like that. I grew up in this really stiff church where you don't make noises, you know? So I like snuck into the corner and for the next like two worship songs, I'm watching. It's like a rock concert in there. I mean, these people are going for it. And they're like handsome young people like us, mm-hmm. you know, not like fat khaki wearing turds, you know, like I went to church with. No offense if you went to my church of 42 people and you're listening to this. I honor you, but I wanted to be around some masculinity and some power, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not like humility and meekness, which I know that those are important, but so is abundance and prosperity. Yeah, my you're goodness. Just saying people that were running hard yeah. like you. So. I'm, I'm just kind of watching this. And the pastor walks out. His name's Dr. Matt Hubbard. He talks for about 60 seconds, and he pauses in the middle of speaking. He goes like this, Andy. Hey, you. Yeah, you. And I'm like this. I look behind me. I think he's talking to the guy behind me. Ain't nothing behind me but the wall, dude. So I look back at this pastor. So I try to sneak into this dark auditorium of 400 people, and all of a sudden the spotlight goes from the doctor right on me. And he goes, hey. I feel like God's speaking to me right now. God wants you to know that you've been gone for a really long time. God wants you to know that you're home right now. He's going to heal what's broken in you. Mm. And I'm like, and I'm feeling like energy go into me. I'm like, but I'm also like, these people are staring at me, come freaked out at the same time. Mm -hmm. So he goes on for like another 30 seconds and he gets done. They put the flashlight back on the, the pastor and he starts doing his thing. And so I purposely walked out of the church like five or ten minutes early because I didn't want people to come up to me. But I get home. I'm shook, dude. Yeah. So I keep going back to that church because my marriage is busted. I'm addicted. And, like, I'm not in a good place, Andy. But on paper, I'm successful. I get invited to this men's conference. It's called Emerge. It's in San Diego. And it's actually happened on April 25th, 6th, and 7th this year. And I'm going back every year because it changed my life. And I'm not even speaking. I'm just going and I'm bringing my friends to the altar, right? Yeah. So I get out to this event, and and it's I got emerge? it's called a merge conference, mm-hmm. and I I get special permission to bring my 11 year old son, my oldest, and he's 16 now, and because it's supposed to be 13 and up. When we get out there, and they give a burden board to each guy, and they gave me one, they gave my son one. They said write everything down on this burden board, all of the all of the junk, all of the burdens that you brought into the desert that you want God to take away. Andy, because I, I was at the end of myself, dude. Here's the deal. Like, as as I sit here with this Jesus is king on my chest and I testify and I, and I like, you experience me like this guy is like massive assurance, right? Like, man, how, like this is unbelievable. I want you to know that I had to arrive here like Sherlock Holmes. It wasn't like I chose God first. I chose the world mm-hmm. and everything in it. But I'm one of those guys that I checked all the boxes, the body, the money, the fame. I, Andy, I did it all, man. Like, a lot. Green Rooms, LeBron, all of it, man, my own TV show. And I experience enough of the world to realize it can only be God. Mm. And so my my assurance that I'm saying this to you with is I, it's the process of elimination. That's Sherlock Holmes. Like, he solves crimes by marking off everything that it can't be. And that's what I did. That's how I arrived at this moment in the desert. And as we get out there, they give me this burden board. I was at the end of myself. So I took this Sharpie marker, Andy, and I tattooed this thing. Guilt, shame, lust, porn, depression, anxiety, suicide, imposter syndrome, worthiness i just i wrote it all down and then i had a string on it andy i put it on my chest and we walked to this giant circus tent 
And we walk in there. And there's 2,000 men with their hands raised up, just worshiping, crying out to God. You can feel the energy in there. So I'm sitting next to my son and my friend Nick Unsworth that invited me. And the first speaker walks out. And when he walks out, he's a big old guy with a big white head of hair. Mm -hmm. And you don't normally see pastors like that. You normally see those kind of like fat guys that know the word real well. No offense. I don't want to look like that, but I want to know the Bible like you do, right? Mm -hmm. But this guy's walking out with some physical authority. In a, like in a fashion that you and I would be like, dang, that's different. Kind of yeah. like you look at me, you're like, he's different. Yeah. So the guy walks out on the stage, and as soon as he speaks into the micro, I feel like I get hit by a lightning bolt from God. And all of a sudden, my chest starts vibrating, and the energy that I felt when I walked into the tent was intensified by 100. And all of a sudden, I feel like I'm like floating out of my chair. And I look at my son to see if this is happening to him. He's just sitting there watching. I look at my friend Nick Unsworth. He's picking his nose. I'm like, okay, I'm the only one. So I'm like, what is this guy's name? And so he says, uh, Keith Kraft. And so I Google it. The third image that popped up on Google Images was the same guy that led me to the Lord when I was 11 years old. It was busting bricks in Jesus' name. No and I'm worries. like, it's the same guy. So as he's preaching for 30 minutes, my mind is racing while I'm also like levitating and vibrating in my chair. It's like a massive heat, but doesn't feel that. It's like the fire of God, but I didn't realize it. So he gets done preaching. I run to the side of the tent and I'm throwing dudes out of the way in biblical fashion by the backs of their necks so I can get to the hymn of the rabbi. And I get up to him. I'm like, Pastor, you're never going to believe this. But when I was 11 years old in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I went to this concert called the Power Team Concert. And you gave your testimony while you broke handcuffs that a Baton Rouge police officer put on you. And then you gave an invitation to Jesus. And I had just never seen a man of God that could look like you. And so I gave my life to the Lord that day. And you also gave me permission to be like a radical man of God. Right? I mean, the way I look right now, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an expression of, like, me just loving WWF, but then my parents being like, no, that, that's arrogant, that's self-centered, and I'm like, yeah. but I, I, I like the confidence, I like the boldness, but then this guy gave me a picture of what it could look like, so I shared that with him, I'm walking back to my chair, and then I feel like I'm walking on pillows. I, I, my, I'm still vibrating, mm -hmm. and I get back, and I find my friend Nick, and I'm about to tell him the story of who this guy is, and I realize... I lost my kid. It's in a tent of 2,000 people, and I lost my 11-year-old son. And he see me start to panic. He stops me and goes, dude, don't panic. Look up there. And my son's at the front of the altar like this, giving his life to Jesus at 11 years old. So let me pause in the story. I was 11 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My son was 11 in San Diego, California, and it was the same pastor. Mind-blowing, right? So in that moment, I knew that God was real. I knew that he was good. And I knew that he was operating outside of time to save me and to restore my family. Mm. So then the very next day, I still got this burden on my back, right? As people are listening to this, like, oh, crazy, radical story, right? But you still got all this stuff on your back that, like, torments you, right? Wakes you up at night, depresses you, like, gives you these temptations you can't control, mm -hmm. Right? The next day they made this bonfire and in scripture it says if any two of you touch anything on earth our father in heaven will do it so i had one of the members on our team place his hand on my burden and all the junk that i brought into the the desert and we prayed that god would take it away and i repented i released it um, in romans 8 28 it says god will take everything from our past together for our good for those that love him and those are called according to his purpose and i knew for 36 years i was called according to my purpose mm. right like according to me mm -hmm. i love god right mm -hmm. i didn't understand him kind of doubted him but i knew in that moment after i experienced the power of the holy spirit i knew that i was going to give even though i don't still don't understand all of the mysteries for god but here's the deal andy do you really want to give your whole life and everything that you have to a god that you can understand with your eight pound brain i don't I want to serve a God that is so almighty, so expansive. I can't quite get you, but if you prove to me that you're real and you're good, I'll give you my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I went home from that event. I repented to my wife. I'm like, babe, these are some things that you don't know about me. I want you to know everything. This is who I was. This is what God did, and this is who I'm going to be in the future. And I told God, I said, God, I've been living like 90%. 90% of my life I've been a good person, but I always had that part of me that was in the closet that nobody knew about, and I always just justified it right? Like porn. I don't cheat on my wife, mm -hmm. right? 
when I'm watching porn. Like it's like the lesser of two evils, but it's still evil. Mm -hmm. So I just repented of all of that stuff. And I told God, I said, God, I believe that you took away so many of those temptations. I believe that you, you healed my heart, that you renewed my mind, but I still feel like I got some residue. And I tell you what I'm going to do, God, I'm going to do everything, everything that you tell me to do according to your word for the next year. Like this discipline that I put on my, my, my body and my performance and my mindset, my flexibility and my nutrition and my recovery and my biohacking and my hormones, all of this, all of that mastery and discipline that I have, God, I'm going to put this on you and growing spiritually in my relationship, not my religion, my relationship with you. And if you can heal my mind, and if you can and if you can renew my mind and you can heal my heart, God, I'll give you the rest of my life. And six months into that covenant promise that I made with God, I woke up one day and I, I realized the tormenting thoughts, they're gone. The depression, it's gone. My anxiety, I haven't felt it in a month. And I and I started to like do inventory over myself. And then I realized, God, you changed me. And I knew in that moment that I'm giving my life and everything that I have, because my, even my kids, I think about, the, I say my kids, those are God's kids that he gave to me. Mm -hmm. The talents that he gave to me, those aren't my talents, those are God's talents that I'm stewarding for him. Mm -hmm. So when you said, do you like learning? No, 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 I like stewarding, right? But in order for me to steward, I gotta learn. In order for me to stand before God with my time, my talents, and my treasures, I gotta learn so I can steward. Mm -hmm. And so I'll share this one last thing, and then I'm interested what your thoughts are. But I saw this painting recently, and then it just like, oh, it just made life even more clear to me. It's this painting that was done by this rabbi in like 1813. It's called the Allegory of Long Spoons. And it's this picture of hell, and it's this picture of heaven. The circumstances are exactly the same. It's a table for 12 and a table for 12 with a Thanksgiving dinner on both of them. Just a beautiful dinner. But all the people in hell are skinny, emaciated, depressed, and gray. Everybody in heaven is fat and happy and joyful. And in the, in the allegory of long spoons, the representation is we have these massive long spoons, our talents. That in hell, everybody's taking what's on the table to try to feed themselves. They, because of the long spoons, they can't get the food to them, their mouths. And so they're, they're making it everything about them, and they're so depressed and emaciated. And then you look at heaven, and everybody's taking their talent and their long spoons, and they're feeding Andy. Okay. And Andy's okay. feeding Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Jacob's feeding Billy. And so on and so forth. And everybody isn't just getting the benefit of their gift. Or the struggle of trying to feed yourself with your gift. Mm -hmm. Because God, there's two things that are really most important to God. That we love him with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And for 36 years, I couldn't love myself because of the dirtiness and the brokenness. Because I was carrying around the guilt and the trauma of my past. Mm. And when I released that to God, gave my life to Jesus, I became a new creation. Not only did I become lovable, I forgave myself. So when you can forgive yourself, you no longer are internally trying to fix this hole inside mm. of you because God did that. So when God did that in me, I began to look at my gifts differently. I said, oh my gosh, God, you're giving me massive clarity that the point of my life is to identify my gifts and give them away. And now I've been doing that for five years and my world just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Like generosity is something that like, without even knowing you, I know that that's a core value. You guys don't know this, but when I reach out to Andy, cause you and I have been trying to get connected, I said, hey, I'm coming into Arizona to work with one of my clients. Um, I'd love to see you and connect. He said, man, send me your flight stuff. I'll have a Ferrari waiting for you at the airport, man. Just very generous, very thoughtful, because I believe that, and I make this up because I don't know you that well, that you've experienced enough of success to know if I'm just enjoying it by myself, what an empty Sucks. and what a lonely place. My wife says, everything I have, she's like, you want to share it yeah yeah she's like dude like yeah. that's your problem i'm yeah. like babe you're a fisher of men man yeah i'm like you know, you're a disciple see... you're a shepherd you're an influencer you know it's like you have a very special anointing man it's really cool it's been fun to see your hq man and to share with you i know that this has been a much longer podcast than normal but no, like, dude, i love it dude, yeah, most thank of the you time for it's me like share. i'm like dude we, well number one this could be like nine days 
Like, yeah, I, when I you can... said, like, hey, let's make it, like, an well, intense 30 minutes, I'm like, man, like, I feel like God's got so much on my heart to share, and I feel like I want to know a whole well, lot more about you. Well, at the end of the day, you. like, usually 30 minutes is, like, it all, but when you're telling real stuff, yeah. It's well, like, the, the best stuff that I here's the deal. I could come in here and talk about mindset. I well, could talk about focus. You go to I could conferences. Talk about when it's about God, it can run for 90 million the years. The greatest thing that I could ever share with anybody is my testimony. Yeah. Right? Scripture says it's the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testimony that sets the captives free. So, the best thing that I could do when I come on here is share something that could set people free. Because I'm walking in freedom. Like, people are like, man, Steve, you're so bold. I'm not really bold, man. The boldness is something that that is like an aftershock of freedom. Like you can, for me, I let the fear of man, the fear of failure, the fear of just being fully known, I let that rob me. And then when I encounter God, Andy, I realize you can have a fear of God or you can have a fear of man and I've experienced God to a degree. And when I say I fear God, like I fear his awesome power. Like I felt his goodness. Why would I ever be worried about what somebody's gonna type on YouTube when they see me light myself on fire, right? Because my, my whole like mantra for life after God touched me is like light yourself on fire because I believe that people will come from miles around just to hear me burn. I don't want them to remember the headline of the guests that you're having on this podcast. I want them to remember the name of Jesus because Steve won't save anybody. Steve will give you some mindset stuff will, that will put a band-aid on your gunshot wound, right? I know because I've tried success. I know that I've tried therapy. I've tried drugs. I've tried women. I've tried just about everything that can make fireworks go off in your brain. Like I let my flesh run the show, right? And like, I love your videos that you come up because man, you don't give people grace to let their flesh run them anymore. Most people, my friend Garrett Uncleback shares it this way. I love it. He said, most people, most men wake up like a Tesla. You get in a Tesla, and a Tesla will just drive you anywhere the Tesla wants to go. You don't even have to touch the gas. It didn't even have a gas. Men are not Teslas. Men are F-150s. You get in your flesh, and you tell your flesh how it's going to serve you and where you're going to go. One of the things he says, and I love it, like, when my flesh says, man, I'm stressed out, I could really use a pressure release and go and watch porn, or I could really use that, that Snickers bar, mm-hmm. he tells his flesh, I bet you would like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> and I feel like that's it. That. We're not our flesh, yeah. right? We're split up into pieces, and the only thing that's going to go to heaven is our spirit. So why are we letting the desires of our flesh and the thoughts of our mind rule us? Like, we need to be men Men that lead themselves by commitments, and so many men are letting their flesh or their feelings lead yeah. them. And the biggest difference between an amateur and a pro is an amateur makes decisions based upon his feelings. And a pro makes decisions based upon his commitments. And that's why you've been so successful on taking broken boys and creating successful men is because you get them out of their feelings, you get them out of their flesh, and you help them to get clear on what they're committed to, and then you give them accountability to make sure they make decisions based upon their commitments. You help men go from amateur to pro by getting clear on their commitments. Well, I know one thing for sure. You need to come out and do an event with us. Come on, man. I love, that, I, sure. I love, I love the stuff yeah. that you're doing, just being around it for a little bit, and I was very inter- interested. I'm like, I wonder what kind of guy this Andy's going to be because I see a lot of – you know, guys that are very good speakers, right? And you've been around in enough of these masterminds and success conferences to know just because you're a great speaker doesn't mean that you have a great life, right? Yeah. I've seen a lot of people that are very good at memorizing their speech and in the theory of life, but that theory never takes root in their life, right? And there are men that make a living being a theoretical teacher or speaker, mm-hmm. but then you get into their life and you're like, my goodness, not in judgment, but you're like, wow, you don't apply these lessons that you teach, right? Yeah, I don't and want- I've always wanted to be a man who goes after the transformation and speaks from transformation than a theory because anybody can listen to a podcast or read a book or go to a, a Tony Robbins conference and become a teacher. But until you begin to transform and produce the fruit, that's why people pay you so much more, so much money or have a desire to work with I'll, someone like me isn't I'll because I memorize a theory. I'm a fruit producer, man. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to tell you from a story that I read. I'm going to tell you from an experience that I've had. Yeah, your applicant. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the theory that's teacher it. and the applicant. But you're right. We do got to get together and make some messes sometime. Dude, it's crazy, man. Just, I'm, well, I mean, number one, 
Um, I had an idea about who you were, right? Mm. I mean, I watch your content, so it's like, you know, it's not like I Yeah, thank you, man. I didn't so even I know that content. you were following me, and I went to send him a DM because I was coming into town. And it says, Andy follows you. I said, dang, man, Andy's my guy. Well, dude, I love it. And <laughs> I love you, people that can uh, put the message out there, but then also tie God into it because I try my, my hardest. My only message is God, man. So if you're like, man, you know, like, chill out on the God stuff, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm I, not going to have much for you. <laughs> no, I. I no, no, I love it. No, like I know what you're saying. You Thank listen you, man. All day long. Thank you. That's all we talk about. Thank you. Um, amongst everything else that integrates every yeah. freaking day. So it's like, yeah. um, I need more of that. So I always say, like, my my goal for 2024, my personal goal. My wife's like, all right, what do we want for 2024? I just said, I just need to be around better men mm. that are on the same journey. Yeah. That behind the business. They're also good people. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I've got three kids, I've got my wife, I've got my team. We have these standards, we have core values. 2024 was about Elliott Army 3.0. Yeah. Um, I created a whole bunch of standards that our company has I to saw live those by. core values. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a lot of them. People well, are that's like, how that's, you help men go hey, pro. But what, what was the first one? Trust God. Yeah, that's good. That was our first core value, said trust God. And those are things that we need to live in daily. And I've had a guy who goes, dude, that's too many standards. I'm like, you're out of here. Look, we love you, dude. But look, yeah. we believe in high standards. We believe we have a big God. We can have a big life. You know, we can do big things. We believe nothing's impossible. Um, and we just think that the right God's going to send the right people, right, to help us get to where we want to go. Um, you know, we talk about being fishers of men. Like, dude, like, we just want to help people make their life count. And then the time that they're here, uh, ripple effect, change as many people's lives as possible. And all, you said something at 36, you found fulfillment, right? You could say, I found God, I found fulfillment. You found your purpose in life, and now you're that not looking it. back. It was fulfillment. fulfillment. It, wasn't, it wasn't fulfillment, it was purpose. Yeah. Because once I, once I experienced God, I knew him to be real, and I knew him to be good. And so everything that I'm reading in the Bible, I don't second guess anymore. I just yeah. take God at his Dude, word. And the craziest thing, I'll say one last thing, entrepreneurship, everything we learn mm -hmm. is already in the Bible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's already yeah. there. Everything that I tell people to do, the old is gone, the new has become, recreate, reinvent yourself. It's all the same, dude. It's yeah. biblical. Yeah. It is absolutely freaking crazy. And uh, anyways, it's like, uh, but I love being around you, dude. Thank um, you, um, I think that uh, we need to get really close. I believe you're a brother, man. You've talked to a lot of our guys. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, just meeting you. I want to tell everybody, if you don't know him, you need to go follow him. Dude, if he has an event, you need to go to it. You need to just watch how he lives. You know, I love that, you know, life was uh, a roller coaster ride for you. And at 36, you really, now you're, it's yeah. like total immersion yeah. in on this new you. And um, I think you're going to go crazy. I think that you're exactly what the world needs. Mm. Um, I believe that you're going to push me to become better. I pray that I go psycho. I push you to become better. Um, we all run this freaking. Yeah, I'm inspired you know, by, I'm inspired by the disciples that you've created here because they are. Well, because you got to have a team. You're just if you're one for your guy. Mission, man. I always say an individual yeah. can be beat, but a team can't be beat. Yeah, so we try to that. build our team as big as we can, just so uh, it's not. And that doesn't have anything to do with me. It has to do with the team, yeah. right? And then we're powerful together. So, uh, but you started with the prayer, yeah, right? Which yeah. I thought was super cool. Yeah, thanks. and that's how we're going to start this podcast. And by yeah. the way, you didn't say, "Hey, can I pray?" Mm. You just owned it. You're like, "Come on, we're going to pray." Yeah. And you grab my hand. So we're yeah. going to finish with a prayer. Yeah. yeah. Is that I was, cool? I was actually going to ask you if I can do that. You and, better uh, not ask me. Of course you yeah. can. Anybody uh, watching yeah. this, hold, hold let's my pray hand. for him. And one, one of the things that I want to do when we're praying is I never, I told you guys, like, my vision, Andy, is I'm going to stand one day before God with all the talents and the time and the treasures, the opportunities that God has given me. And I believe that this is an opportunity where you and I were able to share testimony and talk about the goodness of God and the grace of God. But I also want to pray a prayer. If there's anybody that's listening to this right now who has never given their life to God, and they're like, well, what does that look like? Very, very simple. It's it's a three-step process. It's about you repenting and releasing, right? And that's you just saying, God, I've made mistakes, and, and I, I pray that you would forgive me. And the next step is, Jesus, would you come into my heart, right? That's an invitation. Um, and then you just declaring that Jesus is, is going to be the Lord of my life. And so Andy and I are going to lead you through a prayer. He's going to repeat after me. 
Um, and if you've never given your life to Jesus, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. And if you've given your life to Jesus when you were younger like me, and you're like, man, I've been so lukewarm, and I'm ready to, to live life on fire like Andy and live life on purpose like Steve and just get really excellent in every area because being a man of God and being a Christian isn't just about repenting and saying I suck, but it's about repenting and saying I've made mistakes, but I want to be great for the glory of God. So we'll pray that prayer together. So, Andy, just repeat this words after me. God, God, I need more of you and less of me. I need more of you and less of me. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. And the mistakes that I've made. And the, mis and the mistakes that I've made. I release my trauma. I release my trauma. I release my divorces. I release my divorces. My bankruptcies. My bankruptcies. My lying, my cheating, and my stealing. My lying, my cheating, and my stealing. And I ask that you would forgive me. And I'd ask that you please forgive me. I can't carry it anymore. I can't carry it anymore. Jesus, would you come into my heart? Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you expand the borders of my heart? Would you expand the borders of my heart? And would you heal the broken places? And would you heal the broken places? I give you permission. I give you permission. To have your full authority. To give your full authority. To activate me. To activate me. For signs, miracles, and wonders. For signs, miracles, and wonders. By your Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit. I give you the rest of my life. I give you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Andy. Come on, man. Dude, I love praying with you, man. You feel that peace? <laughs> yeah. Do you feel dude, God's peace up, right dude. now? Yeah, I can do this dude, all day. I feel the Holy Spirit in Good here, thing, man. Thing, So as we prayed that prayer, if I could just share this last part, man. Hey, man, thank you, man. You're yeah. right. We are going to be good friends. Hell yeah. But thank you for letting for me do that on your platform. I know how, how hard it is to, to gather no, an audience say, like this. This is great. Um, but I wanted to say, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, that Lamb's Book of Life that I was talking to you about, Andy, mm -hmm. because you and I collaborated men and women's names that prayed that prayer for the first time. Their name is being written in Jesus' blood, and it can never come out. So people that are like, man, I'm like the biggest fan of Andy, and I actually just prayed that prayer. Yeah. They're going to be in heaven with you forever. Let's go. <laughs> and me, and it. you're stuck with me as well. And if you rededicated your life and you're like sick of being just like lukewarm and you're like, man, I want to get on fire and stay on fire and be on fire, Andy will tell you, man, nothing is more important than community except for church. Mm. And so no church is perfect. No pastor is perfect, but it's important for you to get plugged in. So you have a teacher, mm -hmm. somebody that can teach you the word. Because right. I'll tell you what, man, I carry a Bible around with me and actually have a gift for you. Um, it's really hard. You know, it was a book that was written 2,000 years ago. And so that's why discipleship, that's why community, that's why church is so important. Um, but just thank you for letting me share bits and pieces of my testimony. Dude, I'm We're grateful, gonna do a whole hey, lot more of hey, it. Hey, hey, and that rain looks good times. on you hey, too, look at champion. This. I'm like, dude, look at this thing. Number one, I could put two fingers in here. That's how big his <laughs> hand is. But that thing is bad uh, to the bone. That thing amazing. weighs like 25 pounds. I was curling the ring as yeah. I was doing it. Um, but much love, guys. Listen, number one, obviously, every time he's in town, every time you're in Scottsdale, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm make it. I'm make it a point to come see. Yeah, him. we'll make sure we just keep busting it up. You know what I mean? And we'll keep watching him as he grows. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. Make sure if you guys want to reach out to him, DM him, comment below. You know, let us know what was your favorite part. If you gave your life to God. Yeah, yeah. Dude, DM listen. me if I could say that. If you did give your life to Jesus for the first time, I actually have some follow-up resources. I'm not going to sell you nothing. I'm going to talking about, man, if you're struggling with porn, I can walk you through that. Man, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, I can walk you through that. Did you have a tough dad, right? I did too. I can walk you through that. There's so many things that, like, I want to help you to break your cycle, and I don't I don't need a dollar. This is my, my ministry as Champions in Christ Ministering. We have an ultimate goal in 10 years to bring a million people to Jesus. Jesus for the very first time. That's why I can't. I can't. I can't pass up an opportunity, Andy. I'm going to stand before God, and God has placed this vision mm -hmm. on my life a million people in 10 years. You better believe that I'm going to give this prayer at the end, whether or not you want it or not, hey, because I'm going to stand before God. So I want to honor maybe you. Maybe we should do but 10 you, million. Man. I'm with it, man. Dude, God, hey. God, please bring me more kings yeah. that believe in this vision, yeah. God, that believe in you. Because of that million people, there's 18,000, there's 900 U.S. major cities. What does it look like, Andy? And they don't need to be the Steve Weatherford Club. What does it look like? If God brings me men like you that so believe in this, that are looking for a leader of leader of men's that doesn't want to get the credit because I don't until I get to heaven. What does it look like if we find a way to, to, to plant a men's group leader 
in every single U.S. major city. 18,900 groups of men that get together every seven days, and they talk about their junk, right? So many men are working in silos. So when I say, like, DM me, like, mm-hmm. DM me so I can take care of you. Let's DM build me more so leaders. I can connect you to men that are in your area if you don't know what church to go to. Mm-hmm. Like, DM me and tell me what city because I've got people, I've got ministers, I've got friends, and I, I want the best for you the way that God wants the best for you. I don't want to benefit from you unless God is benefiting. So, Andy, I love you. Thanks yeah. for letting me share. I love you, bro. Um, we're going to do th- more of this together soon. Yeah. But yeah. Are you going to help me? Hell yeah, I'm going to help you. Let's do this, man. Yeah, everybody yeah, that's watching this. this right now. Make sure you reach out to Steve. Tell him what's up. Make sure you follow him. Make sure you understand that everything that he said today, I can tell you poured your heart out, right? I looked in your eyes. Your eyes are glossed over the whole time you're talking. That means that his heart's on his sleeve, and he just wants you to understand that, dude, like, you're all worth it. And, uh... Yeah. And that's it, man. So yeah. I took a lot out of this. I mean, number one, I'm I'm a changed person after listening to him. And I need this. I This is why we, we study. This it, is man. why we learn. This is why we get around the right people. So um, every time you're in Scottsdale, we're going to rip another podcast. Okay? So you're going to have to come back a lot. And uh, I love you guys. Let's have a blessed day. And thanks for being with us, man. Yeah, come on, man. God right. bless. See you guys next time. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.